chilly day here at Britland Park. It's about 58 degrees, overcast. And here come the evil dastardly Wivens. What is a Wiven anyway? I don't know, it sounds evil. We'll go face the Bayhawks here today. And let me just give you the starters for your Bristol Community College Bayhawks. Number one, Wyatt Pinto, he is your goaltender. Number four, Matthew Mota. Number seven, lucky, we're in the lucky seven here today, Bradley Texera. Number nine, Guilherme Antunes. Number 10, Paula Lina. Number 12, Devin Alves. 13, Elma Barrientos. Number 14, William Elliott. Number 18, Cayo De Arayo. Number 21, Alex Cabral, and number 22, Salah Hadeen Hames. The Bristol Community College Bayhawks are coached by Peter Noon. They are assisted by Dave Pacheco, and we are on the way. Here we go. A little toss in here. We are just underway. Bayhawks looking to advance the ball over midfield here. And that ball's going to go out of bounds. And look, this ball seems to be in possession of the Bayhawks. There's your athletic director down yonder. The athletic director, Derek Viveros. Your Bristol Bayhawks are in white with the green trimming. In black and in the blue are the women's. Bayhawks in control. Again, we're just getting this one underway. This game being brought to you by all of our friends here at good old FR Media. All right, at midfield here, there's a toss in. If we can get as much action as we did last Thursday, you will be in for a total treat. Bayhawks maintaining possession on, the, on their half of the field. Bayhawks looking to spread the field here. Things getting a little chippy. Wivens going backwards with it. Bristol Community College with a lot of speed, a lot of talent, a lot of talented players on this team. Nice block there. Up to midfield to Bradley Teixeira. Number seven, Bradley Teixeira, one of the most talented, one of the more speedy, one of the more gifted players you'll see. Right here.
Bayhawks playing a possession game on their half of the field. Doesn't seem to be working for them too, too good. Cabral with a nice kick there. Oh, nice header. There it is, and a goal! Number nine, Guillermo Antunes. What a terrible error by the goaltender, Bistoy Abdomalik. Come, come out there to take a chance. And Guillermo Antunes with a beautiful goal. And just like that, the Bayhawks are on top, 1-0. 1-0 from the beautiful Mill City of Forever. Quinn Sigamon travels here from Worcester, Massachusetts, a long drive. Could be a long day here at the old soccer yard for them. Already down one. And now we have a player down here. Never want to see anything like that. He's grabbing his ankle. One of the Wivens is down. And we're going to get the trainer on the field. Not sure who that is down in the field. It is one of the women's. Time is going to stop here. And we're going to take a little break here on FR Media, your Bayhawks Broadcasting Network. All right, we're back here. And that seems to be number 22. Isaac Steven, who went down, he's going to jog off the field, so that's good to see. The young man toughs it out, will jog off the field, so that's, that's good to see him walk or jog off the field on his, underneath his own power. So hopefully for him and for Quinn Sigelman's sake, he'll be back. Again, I am your host here, Davey Boy. Here on the call here from Fall River. This is your Bayhawks Athletics Network. It's a soccer season. Well in Phil Bloom. Quinn Sigamon playing with fire. The last time Quinn Sigamon played with fire, they got burned. Number 21 here, Alex Cabral, he's got a big boot. He'll just kick it back there though. Again, Bayhawks just playing around in their own backyard. And again, the Bayhawks playing too close to home here. Wivens don't seem to be attacking it. Gill kicks it across. Cannot be controlled. There it is. There's Texera. He's going to have a shot at it. There it is. He's goal! And just like that, it is two to nil. And I told you the Wyverns getting too careless back in their own end. And they just got burned again. And we have a lot of time here. We have a lot of time here left. 38, 38, 54 left. And it's already 2-0.
So again, your goal scorers as, as presidented right now, number nine, Guilherme Antunes at the first goal. And just now, Bradley Texera has your second goal. Again out. Gill kicks it up to midfield. Gets it into the feet of Texera. Texera, nice pass there. It's going to float to the corner. Oh, he's going to have a shot at it. Beautiful opportunity here. Texera going to get it. No, he can't. He loses it. But another goal scarring opportunity there. Oh, there's another chance. Bradley Texera, you want the ball in his possession. That ball high, header there. Good defensive there, good defensive play there by the visiting team to get the ball back out to midfield. Come the Wivens here. It's like a perfect soccer day. And that kick is going to go past the goal. We're going to have a goal kick here coming up by Wyatt Pinto. Again. Again, if you're just joining us, 2-0. Bayhawks taking their time here. They're going to go back to their goalie, Pinto. Good patience here by the Bayhawks. Right here from your Hawks' nest. Again, Bayhawks is going to lull, going to lull the women to sleep here. I have the perf most perfect seat in the house. I am down on the field. I'm around midfield on this gorgeous field. Just taking it all in. No wind out here today. Perfect day for soccer, minus not having the sun out. It's perfectly overcasted just like in my home city of London. My London, London, London bridge is falling down. Actually, the women's bridge is falling down right now. Down 2-0 against one of the best teams in the region. Here comes Texera. He's fast. He's crafty. Right here. Oh, never mind. Ball here near the sideline. Texera trying to get it out of trouble. Keeps it in. Tiptoes the sideline. And then the referee will wave his little flag. Devinavs, instead of the boot, he'll get it back to Alex. Alex going to come up, left-handed boot, trying to get, ooh, open net. I think it hit the post. Hit the post. And we have a Bayhawks player down here. And I think, I think there might be Bradley who might be down. His teammates will help him up. And he 
seems to be all right. And now we get a boot coming up here from the goalie. But another scoring opportunity there. They just hit the post. But I like the continuity. I like the passing. I like the patience right now. The Bayhawks, they are in control of this game. A lot of time left to go. Not a horrible boot by the goalie, by the Wivens. Awful. Ooh, goodness gracious. Boy, the Bayhawks are right there. Fighting it out. And that ball's gonna go out down the far sideline to be inbounded by the Wivens. Nope, it's gonna be Bayhawks possession. Oh, there it is. Oh, good defense there by the Wivens. That ball's kicked up. Oh, what a nice kick there to get it back out to midfield. Well, I told you your Bayhawk starters. I guess I should have told you the Quinn Sigamon, Wivens, and who they got up there. Number one, Bishoy Abdelmelech. Number 11, Prince Rick Pong. Number 22, Isaac Steven. Number 10, Samuel Mosin. Number 7, Mohammed Bowden. Number 8, Bozil Dave. Number 14, Lalson Augustine. Number 6, Ejidi. Marbaru Shamana, number 15, Bright Bremen, number 9, Mathiel Dilla, and number 2, Brandon Walsh. Not to be confused with Brandon Walsh on 90210 Beverly Hills. Again, the backfield. Here's Cabral. McCall drills it towards the middle, but it's going to be kicked out by the Q. Two nil. Lots of time here, here in the first half. As we've seen here at the old Salky Yard, anything can happen. We've already seen two overtime games. One ending in a tie, and then the other ending in a thrilling victory in the rain. It was coming down cats and dogs last week between Quincy College and Bristol. Coming down the sideline. Oh, nice little nifty move there, but he lost it. That ball's coming towards yours truly. We get some, we get some incidental contact. It's going to be a call there on number 11. With a little push in the back, Prince Frigpong. Tough to believe we are approaching Columbus Day. Ooh, that kick is going to soar. But it's going to be way far the goal. Wyatt Pinchel will bring it out for a goal kick. No shots on goal here today for the Wivens. Majority of the game, majority of the possession has been in the favor of the, of the Hawks. And they have dominated thus far. Another man goes down, this time it's another Hawk. Seems to have taken one, I don't know, seems to be in this nether region. We have another player down. And the trainer will come out. Let's see, let's take a look to see who was down there. 
Never want to see anybody go down. The trainer comes out. We're going to take a break here on FR Media, your Bayhawks Broadcasting Network. Okay, we're back. So that was K.O. Diarajo, who went down here. He's being helped off by the trainer and his teammate. And he is going to limp off to the sideline here. Tough for that young man. His Bayhawks have a lead here, 2-0, with just under 13 minutes here at Brooklyn Park. Cabral kick it back to number four, Matthew Mota. Those two are controlling midfield. Bristol Community College coached by Peter Nunes. Peter Nunes has, he's led, he's led Bristol Community College to the national tournament just a few years ago. And has had some winning teams over the last several years. This year has a really good team with a winning record here on the young season. Here comes Big Gill. Oh, that pass won't connect, but it will go out of bounds. Alves will get it to Cabral. I like the way that the Hawks are spreading the field here today. Being more patient than they have in the past. Nice, cool, crisp kicks, nice patience. And when they have their shot, they take advantage. That's what it's all about sometimes in soccer. Sometimes the ball doesn't always bounce your way, but you have to be an opportunist. You have to take advantage of the shots when it's there. And Bristol Community College has done that today because the Wyverns have made a couple errors. The goaltender made an error on the first goal. He came out too far. He tried to take a chance and that chance nipped him in the boots. Eh? And if you take a chance and you miss that chance, these Bayhawks right here will make you pay. They will make you crumble. If you want to get physical with them, they will play a physical game. You do not want to get them get into a battle in a finesse game. They have talent. They have speed. There it is right there. Texera trying to turn it around. And we have a whistle. Not sure the call. I'm going to pretend to know what the call is. But it's going to be a goal kick coming up here from the Wivens. Goalie in the lime green. The last time he tried to kick out of his own end, the ball went absolutely nowhere. And there's another squibber. He did it again. There goes a kick, and it's going to sail. I was talking with the athletic director, Mr. Derek Viveros, and Derek Viveros said they've lost so many balls, $500 in balls. Can you believe that? Well, how much does a ball cost? $50. Ooh, a little contact there. I think it's going to be booted. No infighting. Oh, number 11. Ooh. Oh, my bad. Oh.
So it appears to be off sides. And the Bayhawks will be in control of it now. Out to midfield. Big Gill. Back out to midfield and a header. Coming up on 24 minutes to play here in the first half. I love the job that Alex Cabral back there. And number four, Matthew Moda. The defenders back there they do a good job of controlling that ball right around midfield. There it is, Cabral. Ooh, that ball sails over Texera's head. He had a nice thought there, did number 22, Sal Hadeen. Oh, good job there to get that ball. Starting to get a little bit of a wind here, starting to get a little nipply over here. We started this game with absolutely no wind. Now we have wind. Look at Alex! Look at Alex! The Wivens, they are sitting back on D. They are not attacking. They are kind of they're letting Bristol do whatever they want. Even though there is a lot of time left, the women's need to show a little bit, a little bit more sense of urgency. They're showing none at all. They need to. They won't. They can't. There it is. Right around midfield. And again, Bristol Place keep away. Elves. Bristol doing a good job moving without the ball. Bristol putting on a clinic here, passing the ball. And that ball's going to go out of bounds. And it's going to be a goal kick possession in favor of the Wivens. See right there the way that the Bayhawks attack. They attack like a bunch of killer bees. And the Wivens are doing the exact opposite. They are being passive. They are not being aggressive. But the Bayhawks are, and that is the story here today. And there it is. An opportunity here. Nothing doing. That ball goes out of bounds. Alex, get ready. Alex, Alex. Little toss in. Look at Alex, look at Alex. Alex, Alex. Alex, Alex. Bayhawk spreading it out. Kick it over midfield and out of bounds. And actually it's gonna go off the Wivens. Wivens desperately need to get on the board. All right, a little physicality there. Bayhawks doing a lot of controlling the ball back here on their side of the grid. And again, there's that possession game. And this is all the Bayhawks need to do. They don't need to go to the women's. The women's need to go to them. 
but they are showing no aggression. Bayhawks showing all the patience in the world right now. This is Britland Park. This is the Bayhawks castle. This is the Bayhawks throne, and they will not be knocked off here today because the women's have no heart. They have no passion. They're not being aggressive. And just as I say that, they might have an opportunity here. And we'll see what the call is. It's going to be a goal kick for the goalie right now. Wyatt Pinto. There's Cabral up to, up to Elves. Mota, a little slip there, caught himself. Just under 19 minutes to play here in the first half. Again, I am your host. I am your commentator, Davey Boy. And with the camera work here today is the very talented Michelle Gill gets it over the hump. Oh, Hella Dean couldn't control it. Oh, nice, nice play there by Alves. Ooh, that was a risky header there by, by Cabral. It was like he didn't butt heads. That boot, booted out there by number two, Brandon Walsh. It's down their own end. Things could get a little funky down here. Better protect your own, Bayhawks. Walsh has it. Keeps it in bounds somehow. There's a boot. It's high. There's a header. Oh, nice defensive play. And we have, I was just talking about risky play there and button heads. And that is exactly what happened there. As Alves collides with a QCC player, as they both went up to head the ball and they collided with each other. Never a good thing. Number 11, Prince Frimpong, gets himself up, seems to be holding his abdominal area, but he will stay in the game, tough as nails. All these players out here, tough as nails. Ooh. Things getting a little chippy down there. Hella Dean goes after it. Here's from Pong. Ball goes out of bounds around midfield. We have a whistle. There again, the Bayhawks. Wyvern's looking, looking to get on the board. Nice ball there by Walsh up to Prince Frimpong. The Prince. 
Loses out of bounds as Alves kicks it away. Good defensive play there. Now on their own end, a toss it from their sideline. And that ball doesn't go out of bounds, but it's controlled by the Bayhawks. This is where the women's need to make a play. This is where they need to, to attack the Bayhawks. But they seem to be okay with just drifting back on defense instead of attacking. As you can see, the Bayhawks playing a beautiful possession game. Cabral kicks it up there. He's got elves, but it's too far for him to go. Walsh kicks it up to midfield. Lutz and Augustin, he's pushing the back and he's gonna go down. He's holding his head, he's down. We have a man down here on the field. Number 22, number 22, Isaac Steven, I'm sorry, he's down. And he's gonna get up underneath his own power. But we're gonna have a kick here, dead center, right below the outside mid circle. We're gonna have a dead on straight kick here. Walsh kicks it up. Intercepted there by Alves, good defensive play. Gill, Gill on the open field. One guy to beat. And Gill just couldn't get past his man. All right, so we have a corner kick coming up here. Let's see if we can float one high so we can get ahead on it. It's up high. There it is. Blocked out by the Wivens. Oh, Alf swings and misses. I don't know why you would kick that ball backwards. Ball back up to midfield. Coming up on 12 minutes to play. Ball goes back to Pinto. The Bayhawks goalie, number one. Prim Prong, that's number 11 with the ball. Loses it towards midfield. Oh, nice little, little nifty play there. Nice header to get it out of there by number 14, William Elliott. Cabral kicks it back up to midfield, but the women's are gonna keep it right here. They need to take advantage of this opportunity. Number 22 is gonna kick that one way past the goal, not on goal. And that was actually one of the best opportunities they've had all day. Here in this NJCAA Regional 21 matchup between these two Regional 21 foes. Quinn Sigamon coming up all the way here from Worcester. A long drive. Careful, careful time, plenty of time, man, plenty of time. Again, a little bit of a chilly day. Tough to believe in just a few weeks, so it's going to be Halloween here in the old Mill City. All right, 
right, Walsh kicks it from around midfield. Under 10 to play here in the first half. A half that has been all, all Bristol Community College. One of the finest establishments of higher learning here in the grand old state of Massachusetts, definitely on the south coast. Bristol Community College has been changing the world, learner by learner, by old president, Jack Sprague. Oh, almost had a double ball trick there. There it is. He's got open field. He's got open turf in front of him. Oh, a centering kick, but he couldn't quite get it there. Alex Cabral with a great defensive play. And who's got the ball? It's Texera. Kicks it up there. They'll race it out to the corner. And that ball is going to go out of bounds. Chris Sigamon kicks out of their own end. Again, it's witching season. It's Halloween season. Have you ever heard the story of Lizzie Borden? She gave her mom and dad a hundred walks. Are you kidding me? And it happened in this city? You can stay at the Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast here in Fall River, Massachusetts. You can stay on a spooky, chilly night like tonight during Halloween season, during witching season, if you dare. Fall River, Massachusetts, also home to Battleship Cove, to the Braga Bridge. Here we go. The Wivens know they need a score. But again, Bristol, doing, Bristol Community College is doing a great job on their own end. We have a man down, no whistle. Oh, that ball taken away. Here comes Texera. You don't want him in the open field. That ball chipped in. Wivens just can't generate any solid opportunities, any solid offense here. That boot with the left hand. Diving is Pinto, but that ball's going to sail wide of the mark anyway. Didn't have a shot, but I admire Pinto's all-out hustle there. That ball had nowhere to go, but back to the fence. Again, Bristol Community College, they can take it easy. They can sit back, they can relax, they can have a cup of tea because they have a 2-0 lead here tonight. Actually, late afternoon, perfect time for a tea party on a chill, chill night. You know what I like to do on a chill night? I like to put some chili in the crock pot. I like to brew up a cup of tea, throw in some ginseng, get a blanket, get the good old electric blanket out. That ball soars, but again, out of bounds, back into the possession of Bristol. Again, I am your host, Davey Boy, if you're just joining us. Bristol with two goals within the first 12 minutes of play. They have not looked back. But the thing is, we have a whole nother half to play. We have another 45 minutes to play after this next four minutes and 55 seconds here from the old 
Soccer Yard, the majestic Britland Park. Gill kicks it up there. Gill from the right corner puts it up there. Oh, it is. Oh, just wide. Another shot at it. Dive by the goalie. Nice save. We have a corner kick coming up here. I have to say, this is my favorite play in soccer right here. Put it up for grabs. Corner kick coming. Just a soft boot there. Too many defenders. Not a, not a, not a good play there. That ball goes sailing up. Number 10. The Wivers need to do all they can with this opportunity. Prince, the man they call Prince, puts it up there. What a save! I think Pinto get a hold of that one. But what a boot there by number 11. Prince through Pong to get, to beat his defenders just a little bit and get that ball on goal. And Wyatt Pinto with a heck of a save there. The young lad with a nice save. You gotta hand it to the young lad. Again, Bristol wants to pay, keep away this back end. Check, check in, check in. Again, coming up on under three minutes to play. The Wivens, ideally they would love to, they would love to make this 2-1. That ball's, ooh, on the net and another save by Pinto. But the women starting to get some balls on net here. Starting to get some balls on net here. They've had a couple opportunities the last time, last couple times down. Elliot. I'm sorry, Mota kicks it out there. And there goes another ball out of bounds. That's 50 more dollars if it's lost. Like I said, I'm down here on the field. I am field side. I'm at midfield right now. If you hear any sidebar conversations, or if you hear me talking outside of my scope here, I am the caretaker of the balls right now. Hope you're enjoying this contest here. Two nil the score. As time will wind down here in the first half. And Bristol just has to play it safe here. I believe they will. They're a smart team coached by Peter Noons. Gil trying to get it out of harm's way. Ooh, good job there by Prince to keep it in there. 15 seconds to play. They need to get a ball on net here. There's an opportunity. Kicked out there. Good job there by Alves. Walsh has it. Needs to do something with it. And that is going to end the first half with your Bristol Community College Bayhawks up 2-0 on the visiting Dastardly Women's 
from Quinsigamon Community College from Worcester. All right. We are back here. We are underway. Halftime is over. And we are back here at the old soccer yard here at Britland Park. 2-0. The Bayhawks have the lead. The Bayhawks are in white with the green trimming, with the green numbering. And in blue, right now with the ball. Getting it knocked away there. All right, so your halftime report. Two goals here by the Bayhawks here today, and those goals are by as followed. Guillermo Antunes had the first goal, took advantage of a goalie error. The goalie came out, a little premature there, and Guillermo Antunes hit the back of the net. And then for the second goal, Bradley Texera with the second goal here today. The Bristol Community College Bayhawks come into today's game 6 1 and 1. One loss, one tie, six wins. That ball, and, and that was an opportunity there by number 10, Samuel Musim. To the middle of the box, had a shot there with the left foot, and he kicked it wide of the net. As I said, Bristol Community College comes into today's contest. They are tied for number one in Region 21 with Bunker Hill Community College as the top team in the region, the New England region, Region 21. And they are looking for win, lucky win number seven here today. And the Wyverns, they need to come out with more aggression here. They need to attack. They need to take more chances. Bristol Community College has done a great job of controlling the game, controlling the tempo, around midfield and they are showing the kind of team that they can be. That's going to be Bristol with a throw in here. When Sigamon is coached by Fred Balcari, ba I'm sorry, Balcastle, Eswin Racinos, and Aaron Kablinski is their manager, their equipment manager. I mean, despite two goals within the first 10 to 12 minutes, Quinn Sigamon is held together, but offensively, they have just not been able to generate any offense or any offensive opportunities. They did towards the end of the first half. They had one opportunity on the other end. I thought it was a great opportunity. Prince Fremont came down the left side and kicked, to kicked one that might have went over the head of Wyatt Pinto, but he had a great swatting save with the left hand to swat it out of bounds. Not sure if it would have made it there. We'll never know, but it was a great save. Nonetheless, shot was on net. So, so far, Pinto and Bristol community Pitching a shutout here today as we're just underway here in the second half. And there's a big boot by Pinto, headed by Walsh. Bristol doing a good job with defense. Texera. Oh boy. Texier for Bristol looks like a wide receiver. He's got such speed. When he streaks down the sideline, that ball's going to go up. Oh, what a nice kick there to save it, but it's out of bounds. 
He did a good job to keep that ball presumably in, but it's out of bounds. Bristol ball. Elliott up to midfield. There's Texera. He's got an open man in the open field. He's going to have to kick it back, though. Nice kick backwards. <laughs> Walsh being draped by Bayhawk defenders. Got to look up. Oh, he punched that ball. Elliott kicks it up to midfield. Texera will control it. Being draped by Wivens. Wivens trying to get something going here. And he'll just kick that one out of bounds. And it's going to be a goal kick. And the goalie, Pinto, will kick this one out. Here's Elliot. We got some different players out here for Bristol. Nate Cavallo's out there, number 26. Wivens. Back in Bristol territory. That ball's kicked up. And Wyatt comes out, takes a chance, and takes it away. You've got to be very precise if you're going to come out of net like that. If you're going to take a chance, you got to come right out. And that's exactly what Pinto did. He did not hesitate. He's done a good job all season long. Being one of the propellants that has helped propel this Bristol team to the record they have. Look at to go seven, one and one. Brian Bremen. Number 15 throws it in. He looks like he could play linebacker for the Patriots. Talking about number 15, Brad Bremen. Look at the legs on that man. Walsh controls it. Errant pass there. Bristol with opportunity. Cavallo in the corner trying to kick it out. Got to get it to the middle. And that ball's going to go out of bounds, going to be out in the Wivens. But Bristol will have an opportunity in the Wivens' own end. And another ball whistles out of bounds. And Coach Noons <laughs> will kick a ball back back in and it appears we are going to have a kick here from the right side it's going to be a throw now we're going to have a kick Let's go. Let's go. 
With instead of formal wall, they match it up man to man. Key kick here. Bristol trying to put this game away. There's a kick by Cavallo. The header by Texera. And it goes over the net. God, from my vantage point, I couldn't tell, but it went over the top crossbar. But they had the play that they wanted. It was set up beautifully by Cavallo. And he got it to right to where he wanted to one of his goal scorers, one of his, one of his top athletes, Texera, who got a header on it, but just couldn't direct it into the goal. Went over the top. Bristol tried to come back. Walsh takes it away. And the women's desperately need to get back on, they need to get on the board. Pincho with a beautiful kick back towards midfield. Women still hanging around, they give it to them. They're coming out with a little bit more tenacity, a little bit more aggression, a little bit more passion. Cavallo gets it to the center. Has a man right there coming out as a goalie. And he had a shot there. Oh, but he... Bremen kicks it out. Elliot. Oh, wow. Centering kick to Texera. Heladine. Nice diving kick there to get it to Heladine. Oh, goodness gracious. Cavallo has it now at midfield. We're approaching 30 minutes to play. We've played almost 13 minutes here in the second half. Coming up on 32 minutes to play exactly. Walsh at midfield. He's a good little player. Kicks it back out. Oh, goodness gracious. Pinto comes out to handle it. Elliot. Oh, good job there by Elliot to keep it away from the women's player. They've done a good job of that all day with a good possession game and a good good continuity passing the ball. And patience. Patience, patience, patience. A few games here, you know, at the old soccer yard, we've seen Bristol sometimes getting frustrated, sometimes not being able to connect on passes and going helter-skelter. Today, they seem to be a little bit more controlled here. That ball goes into the teeth of the defense. From the right side, that ball is going to float up and over. Ball goes over the fence there. All right, we have a kick here. Coming up. It's going to go towards midfield. Headed back into play. Into the, Wyver into the Wyvern's end. Haladin. Can't find it. Texera trying to get it out. Paulo will kick it back out, smart play there. Bristol trying to keep it here. Elliot, they're gonna spread it out nicely. Elma gets it taken away. And we have, we have a whistle here. And 
we're going to have a kick just shy of midfield. Number nine is going to look to Boots. Martillo, Martillo Dila. And he'll just tap it to Bremen. Gill will kick it back, and Bristol will control it. Bearded man. <laughs> All right. All right. Yours truly roaming the sideline. Oh, the kick is up there. Paulo up to Elmer in the corner. Kicks it up there. Coming up. Oh, and coming up and making a great play on the ball is B.O.I. Bissoy Abdomelik, the goalie, coming out to make a great stop there. Nice right, headed there by Alma. We'll see what the Wivens can generate. What is a Wiven anyway? Sounds like a troll. Right here. Got one. Things starting to get a little, a little heated here. Walsh with a nice kick. It's going to go too far. It's going to sail over his teammate's head. Under 60 degrees. It's about 57 degrees here. Getting a little chilly as he, here in the late afternoon. Paulo gets it to midfield. There it is. That ball takes a great bounce. Textile gets it knocked away. That ball took the, the ball couldn't have took a better bounce. I'm telling you, that ball, Textile was running after it. And he got tripped up there at the end. The ball got kicked out. And now we have a corner kick here. Number 22. Sal Hardin Hamas to try to put the dagger. It's up. Can't get it, but there's Gil Guillermo Antoon who had a goal today. It is two nothing here at the old soccer yard. Three nothing here. If they could score again, it would make it academic. Big boot there by Bremen towards midfield. Man. They, the Wivens just haven't had the spicing. And Guilherme getting tangled up there with number 22. I believe that's number 22. Isaac Steven. Those two getting tangled up, and now will be a, the ball will be kicked from midfield down the left sideline. 
Try to try to get it centered to, towards the middle of the box there. Couldn't do it. Texera with his speed. Has grass in front of him. Has daylight. Texera. Oh. Anytime he gets the ball and he's kicking that ball down the field and he has possession, the man is just electric. But he had the ball tipped away there by a women's player. Bradley Texera, the man is just electric on the soccer field here at the old soccer yard. As he goes, the Bayhawks go. But the Bayhawks with great defense out there today. They've come out here from the very start, took advantage of opportunities. They showed great energy out there. And they played a great game here so far. We're halfway through this second half. And it has been a great game for Bristol. They've done a great job here today. Now they need to close the deal. The next 10 minutes will tell. Elmer. Let's see what he does there. Trying to beat his man to his left. That ball gets kicked out of bounds. Bristol looking for a quick throw in here. Number three. Nuno De Freitas. Paulo kicks it back out to midfield. That's Brandon Souza. Mota. Walsh. Referee will stop play here. Give the women's a chance to kick just below midfield. There it is, up to Gill. Up to Gill in the midfield, and he'll fall to the ground. There is no whistle on the play. Kick back. Mota does a good job to kick it back for the goalie. Pinto kicks it out. Smart play there, heady play there. The Wivens have 21 minutes coming up. Coming up on 21 minutes to play. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the number 22 tried to do there. He kicked it right past his man. Now I'll tell you what, the Wivens have done a lot of running here today. They've been chasing that ball around as Bristol has possessed it. Right there, Texera with the opportunity to create. He'll kick it back out. I'm very glad I've wore two long sleeves here today. Coming up on the five o'clock hour. Here's Paulo. Here's Gil. And that ball's gonna get kicked out of bounds by Bremen. Nuno, that ball headed out. And Bristol will keep it right here. Barrientos. 
We'll try to get it in. The freshman, Gill, tried to get it up there to Paulo, but he couldn't do it. Here's the man they call Nate, number 26. Under 20 minutes to play. Walsh can't connect with this man. And a nice boot and a nice job to get that ball out of harm's way. They're battling it out there. Boy, the Bristol defense is just swarming and the referee will wave his flag. And the Wivens will keep possession here. Oh, good job there by Nate. Oh, Texera. He would have been off to the races if he had that one. There it is. Go get it, young man. Have an opportunity for a two on one. Texera towards the goal. Oh, nice sliding, diving play there. Wow. He had an open lane there, but that man right there, number 14, he's a long man. Lautzen Augustin with a sliding stop there to stop Texera dead in his tracks just a minute, just a second ago. Bremen. Gill. Bristol trying to get the spacing. Gonna try to chase after it. Oh, nice. Oh my goodness. Ooh, and the goalie. Number one, he's a big boy. You do not want to collide with that man. He's a tank. But we have a man down here now. And he is down and he is flat on his face. Hopefully he is okay. And he having a tough time. Number 14 is down as well. Seemed to be a collision there. Loudson Augustine for QCC for Quinn Sigamon is down. And down, face down. Seems to be number three, Nuno DeFreitas. He is down. The trainer is out there and he seems to be Working with the knee there. And those two, we've seen a few collisions here today. We're going to take a little breather. Go have yourself a cup of tea. Go to the bathroom, take a tinkle, do whatever you have to do. We're going to take a break on here as we'll get this gentleman off the field, as he'll limp off the field. There you go. Let's take a small break here. We'll be right back here on FR Media, your Bayhawks Broadcasting Network. All right, we're back here. We had an injury timeout. We have 17 minutes to play and 14 seconds, if my eyes tell me right. Bristol Community College, the Bayhawks are up 2-0. On a chill October day, October the 8th, 2019. Tough to believe, you know, in just a couple months, It'll be 2020. It seemed like the semester just started a couple of days ago, but we are a month and a half in, a month and a half into the soccer season. Bristol Community College 
with a win here today will maintain their top spot. They will maintain the top spot. Also tied with Bacchus. Ooh, that ball, Cavallo. Haladin was there, but the goalie, a massive man with a massive boot. Look at that. A man can kick the ball. That was his best ball of the day. Gotta give it to the women's. Boy, do they need this. Oh no. And that did not work out well for Quinn Sigamon. They had an opportunity there and they lose possession. As there seemed to be contact, it's gonna be Bristol. Looking to boot it out of their own end. Wyatt Pinto. Also known as Wyatt Earp, the old gunslinger. Pitching a shutout here today. It is a dreary, chilly, raw, cold, late afternoon in October. Look at the beautiful foliage as it sets in. Fall is here. Summer is dead. It is time for football. It's time to cozy up by the fire. with a warm beverage. Wivens just can't get anything going their way. Freeman, the big man, kicks it out to the corner, scampering out, he keeps it in. What's he gonna do with it? Oh, right towards the middle of the net. I didn't find out this old play, you got to be kidding me. And that, is not good. And that is a shocker. My God. And now Bristol Community College. This just seems to happen to them. Game in, game out. You have the lead. This one seemed more comfortable going away. And now it's 2-1. And you have just given the Wyverns life. Midfield here. And now you've just given the Wyverns energy. They haven't had it all day. But you gotta give it. You gotta give it to number nine. Mathiel Dilla, he was in the corner. He was the one that made it happen. I'm not sure who that went off. It went off a Bristol player. I want to say it was off Gill. But now it's 2-1. And now Bristol is on their heels. And now if you're Bristol, you have to play it safe. But at the same time, you have to attack. That ball goes into the corner. Again, the Wivens have life. Do not go away here on FR Media. Texera gets knocked to the ground. The referee will wave his flag. And we're going to have a kick here coming as a helicopter goes overhead. So you're going to have all black back towards the net. Again, number one, Bishoy Abdul Malik. He's made a couple good saves here late to keep his team in the game. That ball's up high. It goes over. It's through to the net. Wow. Boy, was that an opportunity. And that ball's blocked there. 
Number 10 in the open field. Samuel Mosim has room. They're going to have an opportunity. Oh, great block there. Here's Walsh. Oh, what a block. What a block by Knight. Haladine. Oh, chasing out. It's a very talented Texera. He falls to the ground again. And just like that, in a game that seemed just as dead as this day, it has woken up the Wyverns. It has woken up the spirits here at Britland Park. Bristol going to try to hold on for dear life, try to hold on for win number seven. Being double teamed in the corner is Cavallo. Yo! We're going to toss it from the corner. Not quite a corner kick. Cavallo being leaned on here. Oh, we're trying to get out of harm's way. Oh, what a play there by Walsh. Bristol wanted the corner kick there. They couldn't generate it. And that ball's going to sail out of bounds. Alma centers it, not where he wanted to center it. Gill will come away with it. He has Heladine on his left wing. Ball punched up in the air. And like I said, just like a game that seemed as dead as this dreary October day. The energy is alive. That ball towards the goal, over the goal. Kick here. Pinto gets it out to Elliott. And now Bristol has to be careful here in their own end. They can't play keep away anymore. There it is, a nice kick. But he can't connect with Haladine. That ball's going to go. All right. So we're going to have a toss in here. Lots of time here to go. Coming up on 10 minutes here to play. Things get a little... Thank you. Oh, Texera. Texera had a chance there. Now we have a corner kick. And this is my favorite play here in soccer. Let's see how they'll position it here. Going to be kicked, line drive, and a nice header to get it out of harm's way by the Wyvern son of a gun. And now we got another man down here, guys. We got men falling all over the place. And there'll be a stop here in the action. And time running down. They have not stopped the clock here. Nine minutes. And count nine minutes and change. And let's see what the course of action here is. We have a penalty. It's going to be on the Dastardly Wivens. 
from Clint Sigamon Community College who have put a great effort here in the second half. Bristol beat themselves. That's why they're only up 2-1 now, but we're going to have a kick. Dead center. We'll see how, they, how they'll play it here. It seems to be Guilherme and Toons, the owner of one of the goals here from, the, from Bristol. And now the boys in black and blue trying to build a black and blue wall. There it is. No, it gets taken away. I think Bristol blew that one. They had a perfect opportunity. Two one, and in the words of the great John McEnroe, you can't, you can't be serious. I don't think that could have went any worse for Bristol on that last engagement on there on the other end. And this is where it gets kind of funky. Anything can happen. Seven minutes and 40, 45 seconds to play. When you have a lead like Bristol did, 2-0 late in this game, you have to put the dagger in the other team. And now they'll see if they can close it out here. If this game does go to overtime, it is two 10-minute halves or 10-minute short periods, but it is sudden death. So the first goal will be the death. And I believe, what do we have here? It seems to be a toss in from the far right side, as you see there. Business has picked up here. And here we go. And the women's will have time here to try to tie this contest here. Walsh. Oh, what a nice kick. Gets it back towards the Bristol goal. The temperature is dropping. The energy is getting higher. Number six here. Ooh. And the Bristol faithful getting restless. And the Fall River Youth Soccer coming up here. And a field where they may play someday here at college. Coming up on five minutes to play. And now here's the opportunity. Oh. Good job to get it out of there. Cavallo. Yours truly getting a workout over here, jogging the sideline. Hear me over here huffing and puffing. It's not because I'm weird. 
It's not because I'm overly excited. It's not because I'm out of shape and I'm getting my exercise over here. I'm down here on the sideline, the best seat in the house. Cavallo gets it out to Gilly. Gilly to Texera. Bristol trying to make good decisions here. That ball sails towards the goal. Good job by Elliot to try to attempt to get that one on net, try to make something happen. What a boot there by the goalie from Consigamon. Elliot, what is he doing? What are you doing? And now, we've seen weirder things happen. All right, we have a crowd here. We have a crowd here, Michelle, don't we? And now Mr. Walsh, the very talented Brandon Walsh, the only man whose name I could pronounce on this whole women's team, the son of a gun. Less than three minutes to play. The timer is running. Walsh, the kick is up. The header towards the net. Pinto is there. And that was a shot. They had a shot there. Oh, Gil has it. Gil has a boot. He shows it. The women find themselves in this game. By pure luck, actually. But they find themselves in this game here late. But they only have two minutes to make something happen. Bristol trying to play a control game. They've done a good job at that all day. 2-1 your score. As time continues to tick away. And the Wivens, they need to get something going. It's a whistle. And the skull keeper continues to tick that time down. It doesn't appear to stop. Even when play stops, Bristol is going to throw this one in from just below the midline. Not that much time left. But like I said, we've seen crazier things happen. Especially from this old soccer yard. Less than a minute to play. Women's gonna possess this ball. Here we go. They got it going towards the net. Gotta be careful with it. And now Pinto, let's see what kind of decision he makes. The women's have to attack. They have to make a shot at the ball here. That ball loose. Kicked up. Oh, there's some contact there. Referee doesn't blow the whistle. 19 seconds to go. And now. It's got to be some moments of desperation. And that ball goes out of bounds. And that time is going to tick away. 
The, whist, the referee will blow that whistle three times, and the final score, the Bristol Community College Bayhawks, two, and the dastardly evil Wivens from Quincy Gamont Community College will get back in that bus and travel back to Wista.